Hello and welcome to another video. Continuing along my beginner-ish videos, we did one on strings. Today's is going to be about tuples. Uh, tuples are a sequence type, uh, that is they're indexable, they contain other things, uh, and they're pretty common in Python. You see them all over the place for various things, and they're one of my favorite data types. Anyway, let's jump into it and I'll show you all about the syntax of tuples as well as how you can use them for things. Okay, so tuples have two different syntaxes. Uh, the first of those syntaxes is for the empty tuple. Now the empty tuple probably doesn't seem all that interesting. Uh, it doesn't get used all that often, but it is the base case for the tuple data type. And the empty tuple uses parentheses to say it is an empty tuple. This is a tuple that has zero elements. So if we assigned it to something and we asked it how long it is, it would say zero. If we tried to access the zeroth element of it, it would error, et cetera, et cetera. But it is a tuple and uh, it is the simplest of tuples. Every other tuple uh, technically doesn't use parentheses. Every other tuple is defined by having comma separated things. Uh, typically in Python, people will write them using parentheses. So for instance, this is a tuple that has one element in it. Uh, but it turns out these parentheses are only used for sort of operator precedence or to make it look nicer in the code. They're actually completely unnecessary. And the comma is what actually turns it into a tuple. Now, there are some situations where you must put things in parentheses to disambiguate it between uh, parameters in a function call versus an actual tuple. For instance, this is a tuple, whereas this is a single parameter in a in a function call with a somewhat needless trailing comma. Uh, but the parentheses typically don't do anything. Uh, so a comma is what denotes that something is a tuple and you can put any number of things into a tuple. Uh, I'm probably going to write it with parentheses for the rest of the video just because that is the convention that people follow, but the parentheses technically aren't needed. Uh, so those are the syntaxes for tuples, either empty tuple, which requires parentheses, or uh, a comma to make a tuple. One very, very common mistake, and I see this happen all the time in Python, even with experts in Python, is that, again, the parentheses don't do anything. So this is not a tuple. This is just a parenthesized number one. So you'll see here that it is, it is not a tuple. It doesn't have a length. It doesn't isn't a container, it's just parentheses. Uh, and so you, you need that comma in order to turn it into a tuple. Okay, so I talked briefly about uh, tuples being indexable. So for instance, if you have one, two, three. Oh, actually, sorry, there's one more syntax that makes tuples. And I guess technically you can call the tuple function on, on any iterable and it will take in the iterable and turn it into a tuple. Strings are technically iterable by each of the characters in the string. So this will build a tuple of each character being one length strings. Uh, but this is, I guess, not a literal syntax, but this is a way you can build a tuple. The other literal syntax is you can use stars inside of your tuple. Uh, star will take another iterable and spread it into this iterable. So for instance, if you had, well, I guess if we're teaching tuples, you probably don't have other data types. <laughs> but pretend you know list for a second. Uh, you can use a star to spread that into this. Uh, oh, we could just use tuples, right. <laughs> so if we had a tuple that's four, five, six, we could build another tuple uh, that uses that value and folds it into another tuple. So um, tuples also su support this flatting syntax. This is fairly advanced though, so I wouldn't worry too much about that there. Um, but yeah, those are all the syntaxes for tuples. Tuples have a whole bunch of operators and functions. Well, actually, they don't have too many functions. Let's look at the PyDoc for that. Uh, PyDoc is helpful because it allows you to find all of the documentation for tuples, and it tells you all of this, uh, as well as how to build them. We already kind of talked about this. Uh, tuples can be added together with the plus operator. You can use containment on them. So if we uh, add two tuples together, three, four, we get a big tuple. You can do containment, so you can say two is in uh, one, four, seven, we'll give this false. But if we say is four in there, it is. Um, what other things do we have? Uh, we can compare them. So we can equality less than greater than or equal to, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we can ask what their length is. Oh, another neat thing about tuples is they are immutable, which is where you're gonna get this hash from. 
Immutability means that you can't change a value. Usually you can't change a value after it's been created. There are actual ways to do this in Python, but you have to do either C types hackery or recon hackery. But uh, if you were to try and change a tuple, for instance, by doing this, you'll see that you get a type error. Tuple object does not support item assignment, and that is because the tuple itself is immutable. Technically, a tuple can contain things that are immutable themselves. So for instance, if we have a list uh, or a, a series of lists inside here, we can actually modify that list. So if we did x0.append1, you'll see that the tuple remained the same. It's still pointed at those lists, but we were able to change the lists inside of it. There is actually a quirk with this that I see often <laughs> called out in a bit of a, a strange fashion. If you plus equal, I forget whether this needs to be a list or not. I think it has to be a list. Yeah. If you plus equals this, you'll get an error saying that tuple object does not support item assignment. However, if we look at X, you'll see that it did actually modify it. So this is one of those weird cases in Python where a modification uh, is, a modification happens, but it also raises an exception. And this is because it happens in two stages. The first is it uh, calls the in place add on a list, and then it tries to assign to the tuple and the assignment to the tuple fails, but the in place add to the list is not rolled back. Um, I talked about hashing. Hashing is what allows things to be inside of dictionaries. So for instance, a tuple can be a dictionary key uh, and it undergoes hashing in order to be put into this hash table. Um, and then, oh, we should have done the methods. Yeah, the methods are all the way down at the bottom. Uh, there are two. There is count and index, and uh, count tells you how many of a particular value is in it, pretty straightforward, and index allows you to find the first thing that matches something. It also allows you to start and stop so that you can you know, narrow your window of finding things. But anyway, that's tuples. Uh, the important takeaways for this is empty tuple. This is not a tuple. <laughs> this is a tuple, and this is how people would write that tuple. <laughs> Hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.